Here we find that the Lord gave instructions to look after the orphans, the widows, and the poor. To be in the mission field every day is a new adventure. There will be no dull moments. My daughter says, with my dad, we have no dull moments. Because every day there's a new challenge. And how do we overcome all the challenges? By prayer. And you know what is also important? Many pastors, they like to take up the offerings, but they, by themselves, they do not give offerings or their tithes. Your blessing is lying in your tithing. Even Abraham, he gave 400 years before the Mosaic law came, his ties to Melchizedek. And he was one of the richest men in that time of the Bible. You are all rich in Christ Jesus because you have more than everybody else. Because you receive the peace of God. One day, we went to Togo in West Africa. And I said to my wife, we're going to teach the people to tithe. But every time we come, the people say, we don't have money. You do not need money to tithe. And I said to them, you plant cassava, you have chicken, you have goats. Bring into the house, if you have ten eggs, bring one egg into the house of the Lord. Now why does the word says in Malachi, you people rob me? You say, Ay, how do we rob you, O oh Lord? By not giving the tithes. Tithes doesn't mean you have to put only money into the offering. You can bring from the first fruit. You can bring from the field, from your livestock. The Bible says, though that there shall be food in the house of the Lord. For, for whom is this food in the house of the Lord? If we look into Deuteronomy 28, here we find that the Lord gave instructions to look after the orphans the widows and the poor. And the pastors in Africa always say, yeah, but the Muslims, yes, the Muslims, they're sticking to the law of Moses. That's why they're doing that, what Deuteronomy 28 says. They receive Deuteronomy 30, the blessings of God. They do not receive through this the salvation then salvation only comes by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I tell you, I am sold out for Jesus. And so long there is Atham in me, I will preach the gospel of salvation, not a gospel of prosperity. I never hunted after money. When I go, I don't say, you must pay me X amount into my bank account, pay my ticket, 
make sure the hotel is paid and the food is prepared. I never do that. Most of it, me and my wife, we pay out of our own pocket. And I tell you, sometimes our giving is 60% from our income. You cannot outgive God. If you want blessings, be trustworthy, be obedient to that what the word says. Like I said this morning about the hundred rand. The one hand, most people they only know this but they do not know this. And this is even much more important to release. And when you in the mission field and you ask the people for something, say now you build now a church. Yeah? The people helping to build, they're making the bricks, you build it up, they're putting the grass on the top. When you're in the mission field, you don't get the churches with nice soft chairs where you can nicely sleep while the pastor is preaching. No, you sit on the floor or on stone benches. So when you ask them, people, we want to fill this room with shares. And a share costs 100 rand. So, and we have, we need 50 shares. Now the people bring some money. Now the money is just enough for one share. What are you going to do? You wait till there's enough for 50? No. You buy this one share and you put it in the church and say, people, this is what the money gave you brought in to buy a chair. Now we bought one because it was only enough for one. When the people see that, they will be willing to give more. But when you don't buy this one chair, instead of that, you're going to buy a pair of nice, shiny shoes. You mistrust it the money of the kingdom. You have to do what you ask for. If you don't do that, you become a robber of God. So keep that in mind. If you want that people follow you on the pathway to heavenly places, you must be an example that they can say, yes, this man or this woman is a leader who is trustworthy. Not like many governments corrupt. We should not be corruptible. We live in a corruptible work world, but we must not be corruptible. And then I said to my wife, I will get some my seat, treated my seat. And we got some, you know, the bank bags, the small bank bags where they put the coin in. So we got some of them and we put in every one ten mice pits. Why ten? Who can think about it? No? Let me hear. Huh? The tithe is ten percent. But why did I say now we put ten mice pits in? All right. 
I don't want to smuggle with your brains. I told them, here are in this bag is 10 pits of mice, which we have to plant. And you don't plant it in the African way. The African way is two pits and one hole. Ne? Why do they do that? Because they say, in case the one is not coming up. I said, we put it one by one. And normally, it takes three to four weeks for a mice to germinate so that the sprout is coming out of the ground. So, in the, in the one church, the pastor said, I have a field we all planted there, and the others in the other church, they said, now we plant it at home. But there is no raining season now. I said, you see, this bud is from the devil. There is no raining season now. Nothing can grow now. But when God says, plant, then you plant. And after four days, the people called me, four days, and said, the maize sprout is coming out. And the following year, when I came, the pastor took me, the one pastor from the one church who said, we planted in one field. He took me to a storeroom like this. And it was packed with mice heads right from the bottom to the top. And he said to me, and he showed me the pictures. Normally, each mice plant has how many heads? Two, ne? maximum three. When it's a good water there, good fertilizer, but here, in this case, there were four heads on one. And how many pits are in one? 250 by 300. Mice pits. And God multiplied by 1,000. One to 1,000. Now you have 1,000. You put one in, you have 1,000 in return. So how many you can plant next year? How many will you, how big will you harvest next year? And I said, all right, now you planted 10. The first plant you harvest, you send to the church. This is your ties. That is your tinder. The second plant you send to the church, that is your offering. The third plant, you pay your taxes to the government. Because what did Jesus say? What do you see on the coin? Give to the Kaiser which belongs to the Kaiser and give to God which belongs to God. And the fourth plant, you put aside for replanting. And how many plants you have left? Six, ne? This six you can eat or sell. So this year, you planted ten plants. How many plants can you plant next year? You see, God is blessing you through labor work. Ne? God never let the clouds come and open the clouds and the dollars just coming down like rain. No, that will not happen. God said to, to, to Adam, 
you sweat and you work. In, the Pro in Proverbs we read, the lazy will harvest the foolish. When we started in Mozambique with the children mission, we have a children mission for 1,000 children, and sometimes up to 3,000 children, and we feed them. The one week we are there, we feed them in the morning, lunchtime, and dinner. And you know, the one time the 3,000 children were there, we only had made provision for 1,000. But God is able to extend the food. God is able to prolong it. Then how many bread and how many fishes did they have when they gathered together? Hmm? You see, Jesus said, how many loaves are there? How many loaves were there? Five loaves. How many fish were there? Two fish. And how many baskets were left over us? Twelve. And how many people were there? They're talking about 5,000 men. Now the children, and in these days, a family was not undersized with two or three children. They were oversized with 10, 12, and more children. And then the woman. So, we can count on 20, 30,000 people there. Is that not God who prolonged everything? He made an extension of the food. You ate a little, but you were full. But God, and this little boy, maybe his mother, she gave him a lunchbox with this bread and the two fish. Because she knew when he comes to Jesus, it will be a long day. Because Jesus could speak the whole day. And then Jesus comes and takes it away from the boy. But Jesus blessed him. Twelve baskets were full of bread and fish. And he took that home to give his mother. You see the blessings of the Lord. When we started with the children's mission in Mozambique, I took 50 kilo my seed with. The farmer gave that to me. And the pastor planted it. And with this very same harvest, we were feeding the next year all the children. There was never a shortage. And what the pastor did, because the house of God is the house of order. And the pastor wrote down, like I see here, you calling each one by numbers. So I assume next to the number is a name. But here the pastor from all the children who marching for the children conference 20, 25 kilometers to attend here. They leave three o'clock in the morning to be for breakfast there. Sometimes they march the whole night. And then they get the food. And they get, hear the word of God. You see, Jesus also, he was feeding the people, not only spiritually, but he was feeding them, also them for the body. And we also, we do that. I mean, you and Pastor Royce, you distribute milli meal so that the people's tummy gets full, but also that the soul 
gets fed.